Okay, welcome back. Uh, we are going to start a uh, new topic. It's on refrigeration cycle. Okay. So, in this particular uh, topic, we are going to analyze uh, refrigeration cycle based on vapor compression and other factors related to that. So, let me first start with the definition again uh, with the refrigerator and the heat pumps. So, the refrigerator basically comes from the fact that uh, its utility is, uh, is to transfer the heat from a low temperature region to high temperature region and it cannot be done due to the second law constraints and hence you need a specific device that is your refrigerator. The refrigerator and the heat pumps are essentially the same device and they differ in the objectives only. The refrigerator is mainly to uh, have a cooling effect and thus desired output is a cooling effect whereas the heat pump has a uh, desired output for a heating effect. Okay, so, objective of a refrigerator is to remove heat from the cold medium and the objective of the he heat pump is to supply heat to a warm medium. Okay. And we have already discussed in our previous lectures the definition of uh, coefficient of performance for refrigerator and a heat pump. Okay. So, how do you operate refrigerator and a heat pump? Okay. In a, uh, as we discussed for the case of the uh, vapor uh, power cycle, uh, we can start with the basic uh, idea of a Carnot cycle and in this case it would be a reverse Carnot uh, cycle. So, we can uh, look at uh, the, the basic philosophy of making use of a refrigeration cycle based on reverse Carnot cycle. Now, we know that uh, for the Carnot cycle uh, yield the maximum thermal efficiency for a given uh, temperature limit and thus our idea here is to make use of Carnot uh, cycle as a standard okay? and we can use this refrigerant okay, uh, saturation dome and this is our uh, Carnot cycle. Okay? So, this is your Carnot cycle. So, of course, so the cycle has uh, an evaporator, compressor followed by condenser and the turbine. So, this is a reverse uh, process or uh, reverse uh, cycle uh, uh, compared to that for power cycle. Now, the, there are certain problems as and the problems are almost similar as we have noticed in our discussion of vapor power uh, cycle that for the case of uh, 2, 3 which is nothing but your compression. Okay, and if you operate uh, your Carnot cycle within the saturated dome of refrigerant, then you have to worry about uh, the handling the two phase system within the compressor. Okay? And that is one aspect of uh, the problem. The other aspect is that uh, when you consider turbine, turbine has difficulty in expanding mixtures and that would be the case for 4-1. So, 4-1 uh, expansion of high moisture content is a concern and a difficulty to do that. Okay, so, we may like to change this uh, Carnot uh, cycle such that some part operate uh, outside the saturation dome, but the difficulties are same as we have observed for vapor power cycle. So, for example, that uh, if you want to maintain the isothermal condition at the bollock and evaporator, it will become difficult when you operate for example, in this kind of uh, situation where some part is outside. Okay, such as condenser. Okay. So, what is the alternative to get rid of all these issues and the one couple of things which we can do is to completely vaporize the refrigerant okay, before it uh, gets to compressor okay, which essentially means that uh, what we can do that this here would be a saturated vapor okay. and now this is compressed okay, goes to uh, superheated vapor. And this would be completely condensed liquid and we can replace uh, a turbine by expansion valve and this here would be your low quality mixture. Okay. So, what we did is that we avoided the issue with the compressor by considering saturated vapor okay, compressing to a superheated uh, vapor. And then we also avoided the issue of uh, turbine where we replaced the turbine which is more costly by an expansion valve okay. and this expansion the purpose of uh, making use of expansion can be uh, utilized by an expansion valve as well. Okay. So, uh, this would be your ideal vapor compression refrigerator cycle. Okay. Uh, it should be noted that this will involve certain friction okay, and hence uh, this cycle which involves your expansion valve is a irreversible process or irreversible cycle. Okay. 
So let me uh, summarize what we discussed. So uh, we are going to vaporize uh, completely before the, the refrigerant enters the compressor and then we will undergo the isentropic uh, using the compressor. So if you put down the processes on a TS diagram, this is how it is going to look like. So you have uh, 1 to 2 is isentropic uh, compression okay, followed by a constant pressure heat rejection in a condenser. So this is 2 to 3. And this is at the saturated liquid, okay, and then it undergoes a throttling process two to four, okay, in an exponential device followed by a constant pressure heat absorption in an evaporator. So four to one is constant. And that's how the whole cycle is. Now you may think that you know may, making use of uh, turbine. So if you use a turbine, of course, it's going to be isentropic, and an ideal turbine will have undergo isentropic expansion. That will be your uh, 4 to 3, so this will be for your turbine, if you use turbine. So that way we can increase the heat kind of uh, heat extraction from the evaporator, that means QL will be more if you have used a uh, turbine, but the added benefit uh, cannot justify the cost and the complexity of making use of turbine and thus expansion walls are typically used for more practical reasons. Okay. So this particular ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle is uh, commonly uh, used for refrigerator, air conditioning system and heat pumps. Now it should be noted that the coefficient performance increases by 2 to 4 percent for every each small change or degree Celsius the evaporating temperature is raised or condensing temperature is lowered. So that is based on the analysis. So we can start with the analysis a bit. Uh, so there are four components in this vapor compression uh, refrigeration cycle okay, and we are going to consider there to be a steady flow devices and one can write a complete uh, energy uh, a balance of that. As we know the condenser and evaporator will not involve any work and we are going to consider compressor is adiabatic considering that a steady state energy balance will be simply this. Okay. So Q in minus Q out plus W in minus W out and that will be your simply H in H exit minus H i or change in enthalpy. Okay. So you can apply this uh, steady flow energy balance for each of the devices. Now uh, what about the coefficient of uh, performance for the refrigerator? That will be your QL divided by W net in. One can also describe this ideal uh, vapor compression refrigeration cycle uh, not only on this uh, TS diagram, okay, but as well as also on a pH diagram. The reason being that if you are using uh, a throttling uh, process, then of course H is constant. So considering that when you make use of a pH diagram, your three lines are going to be straight line and the energy transfer is, is directly related to the length of this uh, process. Uh, this will represent the, the amount okay, uh, of the heat uh, transmitted or rejected. So that length becomes quite, uh, you can directly relate to that. And of course, you have three lines which are straight line. Now making use of this information, one can uh, find out your COPR. The QL is nothing but your H1 minus H4, which will be your this in H1 minus H4. And uh, W net is of course your change in enthalpy across the compressor which is S2 minus H1. Okay. And similarly your COPH would be your QH will be S2 minus S3. Okay. So that will be your this value divided by W net. Now for the case of uh, idle conditions of course uh, you are assuming that uh, before entering the compressor you have a saturated vapor. Okay. Okay, and uh, after the condenser, the exit uh, fluid or the refrigerant is uh, at saturated liquid condition. So this would be your saturated liquid. And thus, your H1 can be approximated to Hg at P1 and uh, or H1 can be simply written as Hg at P1 and S3 is nothing but H of fluid uh, liquid at uh, P3. Okay. So that would be saturated condition. Okay, but the reality is that there will be a certain deviation from the ideal uh, vapor compression refrigeration cycle and this is mainly because of the uh, fluid uh, friction which would be across the pipe and as well as the heat transfer from or to the surrounding. Okay, there will be some changes on the process diagram. So this is your again a TS diagram. And uh, if you recall that the, what we considered earlier that for the ideal conditions one was here right for the practical or the real scenario this is uh, going to be uh, difficult because this there may be a loss in the pressure and so forth hence uh, it's uh, more useful to little bit superheat 
before it enters the compressor and that compressor there could be a friction or there could be heat transfer. So, the friction uh, would of course increase the entropy, For heat transfer can increase or decrease the entropy if it is from the system to surrounding the entropy of the system. Uh, decreases and otherwise it will increase if the heat is transferred from the surrounding. Thus, it can end it at uh, 2 or 2 dash depending on which one dominates. Now, there could be a, a pressure drop okay, across the condenser and the pipes. So, you can, so this pressure may not be constant okay, and it may also subcool at uh, 5 and uh, beside also there could be a pressure drop across here. So, it may not reach at, uh, at uh, the condenser pressure. So, thus it may exit at 6 okay, to 7. So, that is what your 6 and 7 are. Okay, so, this is overall process and uh, this process clearly indicate a lot of irreversibility can be on the real cycle. Okay. Uh, so, typically when we are going to solve problem, we may be considering some, some idealization and some uh, non-idealization. So, we can illustrate one example. Okay, where we have considered uh, isentropic process of uh, for the case of compressor and as well as uh, irreversibility associated with it. So, this is an example of vapor compression refrigerant cycle where the refrigerant is uh, slightly uh, superheated. Okay, notice note that here is like slightly superheated at the compressor inlet. Okay, and then of course uh, the here the entropy increases, so it's not isentropic due to the irreversibility. And at the condenser exit, it is slightly subcooled, so this is subcooled. Okay, so it's not at saturated uh, liquid condition, and of course uh, the compressor is not isentropic. So one need to find out uh, the isentropic efficiency and the coefficient of performance for the refrigeration, and as well as the rate of heat. Uh, removal from the refrigerant space okay that is qh so one can of course use the qh in terms of enthalpy so this uh, would be your work would be simply m dot s2 minus h1 okay and uh, your so one can look at uh, the tables to find out because you have all the information available okay so one can find out the enthalpies at each point so what about uh, your uh, asentropic efficiency this will be your H2S minus H1 and H2 minus H1 compare. So, this is ideal case and this is your the case as in your problem statement. So, one can find out this because you know this entropy, you know your the pressure here, okay. The pressure is known 0.8 mega Pascal and as well as the entropy is known here S1. So, this is going to be S2S is nothing but S1 and from here one can find out H2S. Okay, and similarly, H1 is known, S2 is known considering that you have been given 0 0.8 mega Pascal and 50 degrees Celsius. So, you know your asentropic efficiency of the compressor. Also, find out CP, COPR, which is nothing but Q dot L and W in. Okay. Q dot L is nothing but your enthalpy change from H1 and H4. So, one can find out H, uh, H4 as well. Okay. And W in is nothing but your this information. So, one can make use of this simple exercise in order to find out the necessary questions or the questions of the address the questions uh, as in the example. Okay? So, this is a very brief uh, kind of uh, example which we wanted to try before moving ahead with uh, uh, questions that how to select uh, right uh, refrigerant. If you look at the kind of refrigerant used, there are wide variety of uh, refrigerant. Of course, the refrigerant can cause some severe environmental damages. And thus, uh, during this course uh, of last uh, few decades, uh, the variety of different refrigerants has been selected. And you can see refrigerant systems uh, may have uh, refrigerants such as your series of a family of a family such as your chlorofluorocarbons, ammonia, okay, which is toxic, hydrocarbons, carbon dioxide, air and even water. Okay. But most of the market is composed of uh, a very selected uh, uh, refrigerants, which is a specialized refrigerants. Okay. Uh, but this R112, which was commonly used earlier in domestic refrigerant, is now being replaced by R134A. Again, a set of molecules which are these are nothing but representing a set of uh, molecules with some additives and so forth. Okay, uh, what is a commonly refrigerant is R22, which is commonly used for your conditioner. And of course, uh, there are many other refrigerant depending on the conditions. Okay, so two important parameters which are being selected uh, usually is uh, uh, the temperature of the two media, that is the refrigerant space and the environment with which uh, the refrigerant exchange heat. So, 
Uh, before uh, selecting refrigerant, one need to see the type of applications and based on that one need to find out the right kind of uh, refrigerant which has the phase diagram where you can make use of uh, your, uh, uh, your uh, ideal uh, vapor compression uh, ref uh, refrigeration cycle. Okay? So, thus this allows uh, one to manipulate a bit uh, in terms of uh, molecules. Of course, they are environmental concern and hence one need to be careful about selecting the refrigerant. Okay? Now, the other thing is that though uh, the refrigeration cycle which was used uh, as uh, described uh, in terms of vapor compression refrigeration cycle, it turns out to be the quite sufficient in most of the application okay? and thus uh, is commonly uh, used because of simple reasons such as inexpensive, it is simple to implementation, reliable and practical maintenance are free. Okay, but for industrial application, uh, simplicity is not the requirement, it is the efficiency which is the most important aspect in terms of the usage of any specific process uh, or the design or the cycle in, the, in this case. Okay. Uh, thus, the industry look for more innovative refrigeration systems and the examples are cascade refrigeration systems, multi-stage compression, uh, liquefaction, there is absorption kind of uh, refrigeration cycle and there are many other variant of that. So, we will not go into details uh, of all this modification. Okay, the idea is to simply understand that they, you can modify it okay, in order to achieve more efficiency and this is something which we can illustrate by a simple example. Uh, this example is uh, on cascade refrigeration system okay, and here what is done is that you have a topping cycle and is a bottoming cycle, okay, that means one cycle and this is another cycle. Okay, both are kind of a refrigeration cycle. Okay, where one of the top is an evaporator and the other, the, the bottom one, whatever the heat condenser is losing heat is taken by the evaporator. So, in other words, it acts like a heat exchanger, okay, both of them together. And whatever the heat being exchanged is, is can be considered balanced, that means considering no losses here, one can write a simple equations here, okay, where we can, one can balance the heat. Here. So, by doing this, uh, one can think of how this has become more efficient by considering such a cycle. Uh, let us consider this particular bottoming cycle is 1, 2. So, that means here 1, 2 and this 3, 4. So, 1, 2 and 3 and 4. So, this is the cycle here. Okay. If you had not used uh, this, then you would be considering something like this. You know, you will be, let us say, assuming that you have just one cycle. So, the, the effective cycle would have been this. Okay. So, this uh, blue curve would have been the effective cycle where the effective expansion wall would have been this one and this would have been the compressor. But now by considering two cycles what you did is you have increased, so you have you went up to the lower temperature here. Okay. So, this is your 3 here and by reducing the temperature at this particular stage you have also increase this efficiency cycle which is nothing but your the amount of uh, heat which you have extracted because this is nothing but TDS. Okay? So, this is the amount which is additional amount of uh, effectively additional amount of your QL which is being uh, evaporated from the cold refrigeration cycle. Okay? And the other thing which you did by having a small cycle on top okay, is that this effective compressor work has also been uh, reduced. Okay? So, if you had taken this blue curve, then essentially you would have also included this additional part in the compressor work. But now, with this modification, okay, you have reduced this work. So, of course, there is one has to look into the other thing that you have to include some additional devices here, but it turns out that this becomes more efficient. Okay? By increasing the refrigeration cycle and by decreasing the compressor work would mean that the CO PR would be much higher, okay, where COPR is nothing but QL, which is nothing but again your 4 to 1 uh, m h 1 minus H4 multiplied by the uh, flow rate. And uh, this two uh, work here work for this one. So, W in that in 1 and this is W in 2. So, that will be your that is W in 1 and W in Okay. Now, it turns out that uh, this be, due to the efficiency of such a cascading kind of refrigeration cycle, uh, there are system which uses more than 3 also okay, or more than 2 and uh, 3 as well. Okay. So, this is a simple exercise which tells you that there is alternative ways of modifying the refrigeration system in order to 
increase the efficiency. So, it is just a play with the phase diagram uh, of play with this uh, uh, you know how to make use of the temperature as well as one can think of uh, uh, using a different refrigerant where this uh, could be more efficient. Uh, so, this is uh, the overall summary uh, what we have gone through uh, it is a short uh, discussion on the refrigeration system because more or less it is uh, similar to power cycle vapor uh, power cycle ok uh, the only thing is is based on the reverse uh, cycles. Okay. So, uh, we have gone through the basic idea of uh, reverse Carnot cycle and the, U, the, the why this is not suitable for refrigeration and heat pumps and the ideal vapor compression uh, refrigeration cycle is what we consider where we uh, vaporize the uh, completely the refrigerant before entering uh, it to uh, compressor. Okay. And what is a typical actual vapor compression refrigeration cycle? Uh, and the, the refrigeration itself, uh, refrigerant variety of refrigerant, uh, one need to think about the type, select it correctly based on the application. Uh, okay, and uh, and the, in the end, uh, there is a lot of prospect of uh, innovating vapor compression refrigeration cycle. And one example we illustrated using cascading, but there are many examples uh, which one can uh, look at it and try to modify it in order to have higher COPR. Okay. So, that will be the end of it. In the next uh, lecture, we will start uh, a new topic on uh, thermodynamic property relations. Uh, okay. So, I will see you in the next lecture.